I am uh, Nirmalia, so I'll be uh, uh, giving you a, a broad uh, presentation on optimization and large scale problems. So, so before you uh, we move uh, uh, to this uh, title of this presentation. So I just. Uh, uh, have some questions. So hope all of you are knowing this Amazon uh, system and every day it sends uh, the recommendations to the customers that uh, so which uh, things you want to purchase or whatever you have purchased on the basis uh, of that it recommends uh, so many other uh, goods uh, to purchase. So there is how means do you know that at Amazon the purchasing behavior of millions of customers are processed by a recommender system to produce the recommendations for valued customers. Similarly, you, you can also see uh, in, a, in a street with crowd, traffic rules and speed breakers, an autonomous driving car processes thousands of images in every second to take the decision, different driving steps. So processing all these large number of images by the autonomous uh, driving car or by a recommender system, all these recommendations by different people uh, is a part of a large data with large variables, which give birth to a large scale problem in mathematics. So large scale problem appears everywhere. So they are there in computer vision, they were in image processing, they were in machine learning and many more. So in their applications like recommender system, weather uh, forecasting, autonomous driving vehicles or autonomous uh, spacecraft. So when there is a problem, means our case, the large scale problem, uh, in all these uh, conditions. So then we also require a solution. So here comes the optimization. So a mathematics through which an optimized solution for our problem can be achieved. So this is what motivated us uh, keep this title uh, for this presentation, an optimization technique to solve large scale problems. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I, uh, it will be better if I can, uh, even change it to the magic of, uh, even I can change it to the magic of, of an optimization technique to solve large scale problems in computer vision, machine learning, uh, maybe so many image processing and so many more. And so on. So maybe this will be uh, will be more appropriate. Actually. The magic of optimization technique to solve large scale problems uh, in computer vision, machine learning, and image processing. So these are uh, going to be the overview of my presentation in introduction to large scale optimization problems, motivation to choose a first order optimization problem called IDMM. So I'll be discussing one first order problem, which is IDMM. It's an optimization technique. I'll tell you what is first order and all that as a solving method. Then the theoretical aspect of this method, then some numerical examples, which explains how, how good or where this method lacks and conclusion and some future scopes of these uh, optimization methods. So now, the basic questions that this presentation uh, answers were, what is a large scale problem in optimization? Where and how they occur? What challenges they bring in a real world application? How can they be solved to get a realistic solution? What are the methods to solve them? Why ADMM? the alternative direction method of multiplier, ADMM, to solve them uh, for the last scale problems and how ADMM performs 
in compared to other state of the art problems which, uh, which may be uh, which are available already so these are the basic questions that this presentation is going to answer now the next thing is about what is uh, our large scale problem so as you already have a glimpse of large scale problems which may occur in uh, uh, means uh, which may occur as a recommender system uh, which is processing a large number of variables giving rise to a mathematical problem called large scale problems so these are some examples like image segmentations of self driving car building character recognition system as a banking solution predicting weather to help farmers and many more so now uh, we'll have one uh, uh, example uh, to have a feel of uh, what is this large scale problem maybe and what are the issues with these large scale problems so maybe i'm taking one uh, problem uh, image okay one image problem i am checking and uh, trying uh, to give you a feel of how this uh, large scale problem might be occurring and what challenges these problems are bringing to us so you take uh, let us say we have an have a picture so it's a image problem image deconvolution problem actually so here let us take we have a, a picture which is actually blurred why and why is a noisy blurred observed image and there is something called x which is original image so this y is a matrix actually which stores the all pixel data of the image so mathematically uh, if we talk this y is a uh, is a matrix in which we have uh, saved all the pixel data of the picture and x is the original image so we have y we don't have x so let us say we have the relation y equal to kx plus so here this eta is actually the noise is actually white noise white gaussian noise this eta is here the noise so the uh, task of this problem is uh, to recover the original image from the noisy image so if you want to achieve this task then you have to minimize uh, the noise so minimizing noise means i can write the noise in terms of y minus kx so minimizing it means minimizing this y minus kx or its mod so minimizing this is same as minimizing its uh, square or norm square so i can always give it y minus kx norm square so this k here uh, is the convolution matrix Uh, i have not written k is the convolution map so the task is to minimize this norm square this is the uh, euclidean norm so to minimize this for uh, for what value of x this function will be the minimum so we write in mathematics it like arg min so for what value of this so for what argument arg stands for argument so for what argument x this function is minimum so arg min of this function for x what value of x so the task here is to find the x. so how can we find this so this problem is actually equivalent so you can see it is a quadratic function where y k were known x is unknown so we have to solve for it now this quadratic function uh, if it is a quadratic function then it can always be written in this form x transpose ax plus q transpose x plus c so it's augment so we need to find out x so now you see how we minimize the functions 
So how we minimize all these functions? So let, let's say you have f of x equal to x transpose a x plus q x uh, q transpose x plus c. Now for for two dimension problem for two dimension problem a equal to one. Let us say I have taken q equal to zero and c equal to zero for simplicity. It means I'll have f of x equal to x square. So when I have f of x equal to x square, then we know it's a high school problem uh, by which we find the minimum. So we find the derivative and uh, equate it to zero. Then uh, we equate it to uh, zero. Then we solve for it. So we get zero comma zero is a critical critical point. And then we find the double derivative at x. Which is two, which is greater than zero, and on that basis we say that the critical point zero comma zero is a minimum point. If you plot the graph, then it is something like this. So here is the minimum point, and here is the f of x equal to x square. But when uh, this a becomes when a becomes a matrix one zero zero one, now you see what happens. So maybe this is case one. And in case two, what happens? F of x becomes, and if this x is of two variables, means x one and x two, then you see what is f of x. F of x is x transpose a x. So that means it is x one x two transpose one zero zero one uh, with x one x two. So that is how you will have x1 square plus x2 square. So here to for the uh, to minimize uh, find the minimization we take help of the Hessian matrix. Hessian matrix which is something like this: do square f over do x1 square do square f over do x1 do x2 then do square f over do x1. Do x two, do square f over do x two square. So we take help of the Hessian matrix. Now, what what is this uh, Hessian matrix? Uh, so what we say that if the Hessian matrix is positive definite, then there is a minimum. If the Hessian matrix is of uh, negative definite, then It is uh, uh, negative definite. Then it is ha having a maximum at x. So this is where uh, the challenges comes. Now you see when the Hessian is of two by two matrix, it's fine. But when you have one f of x, which is written x transpose a x, where x is a uh, where x is. Uh, maybe x one, x two, up to x n, and you have a one uh, one n cross n matrix. Then uh, you see what will be the Hessian. Hessian will be again will be n cross n. Then what you will be doing? So how to find the minimum or uh, maximum? So here, finding the minimum or maximum again depends on the Hessian. So if the Hessian is if the Hessian is positive definite, at x at the critical point x, then x is a local minima. Minima. If the Hessian is negative definite at x, then x is a local maximum. You see. So all this depends upon whether h is positive definite or not. So if h is not positive definite, so you see the case of 3D, you will have the graph like this. So this is what the graph 
of 3D when you have f of x1, x2 equal to x1 square plus x2 square. Now, this is the graph. Now, I cannot draw means or I cannot imagine that how the things will be in n dimensional when it will be x1 square plus x2 square up to xn square. Now, one thing we can do that if the Hessian matrix uh, of a convex function is always positive definite. That means if in n dimension also, if the uh, uh, the function is convex if the function is convex then the Hessian is always positive definite. So if the Hessian is positive definite, then I, I can always say that, uh, that it will be a minima or a maxima. So negative uh, positive definite means it is a minimum. But what if the function is not convex? So see, the convex functions were always looking like this. So the non-convex functions, maybe in, uh, in 3D, some non-convex functions will be looking like this. So these are non-convex functions. So there are so many local minima or uh, maximals. So it is a non-convex. So in n dimension. So if the function is non-convex, then uh, we cannot find this minimum. So our Hessian rule will not work. So then what we need to do, we need to convexify, convexify. That means we need to reduce the function to an equivalent uh, function, which will be convex, which will be convex. So convexify it and then use any method, which you know, the optimization method to solve it and to find the minimum. So our task here is to uh, find that X uh, for the minimization. So with this uh, means knowledge, uh, I, I'm just uh, trying to give you an overview that how the large scale problems are and what issues they might face. So this is the issue they may, may face that is non-convex issues. So most of the real life problems were non-convex. So we need to convexify them or we need to find out the techniques which can solve the convex problems. So now, along with this, there are some uh, constraint comes into action. So like some discrete constraint. So you can have a background or foreground separation in image. So it will be either zero or one. It cannot have any other real values in the solution. So in that case, it, it is a discrete constraint. So sometimes this constraints makes the problem and be hard. So, and the other issues are this Hessian. So these Hessians are second order derivatives. So evaluating them, and then storing them uh, into the memory is a big problem. So here are some, uh, here are the uh, challenges that these large scale problems brought. So in terms of Hessian or in storing Hessian matrix or in terms of uh, uh, these um, uh, large variables or in terms of these non-convex problems or NP hardness. So this, so you see here, the first, the problem takes high computing time because uh, it needs to find out the second order derivatives. So if, if it is convex, then Hessian you calculate and find the second order derivative. Uh, problem causes computer memory to be insufficient. The problem may become NP hard. The redundancy in the data, so that it may be a, a lot of repetitions in the data or data can be represented, some data can be represented as a linear combination of some other data, that is what mathematically we say. The solutions for the system may be achievable, may not be achievable realistically. So all these the challenges, the last scale problems brings with it. Uh, how to deal with the difficulties of large scale problems? So what to do? So one way is, don't solve the large scale problem, solve a sub problem of this problem. 
so check for a well studied class of sub problem set up and solve a smaller simpler version of the problem and then scale up to the large scale now what is the benefit uh, with working with a smaller version so if you work with a smaller version it reduces the time to identify key relationship in the model makes the model easier to debug and can identify the efficient solutions so this is one of the way and uh, to deal with uh, large scale problems so moreover the uh, dealing or uh, dealing with the large scale problems are problem specific so it may differ problem to problem but generally people we follow uh, this methods for solving large scale problems in optimization so you see here so there are uh, plenty of methods to solve the large scale problem so uh, i hope you remember our problem is y our problem is y minus kx norm square augmin or its equivalent augmin x x transpose ax plus q transpose x plus some c the equivalent form so we are trying to solve this problem so we are trying to uh, search uh, what will be the uh, what will be a suitable method to solve so there are so many methods uh, like deterministic methods so deterministic methods are those methods in which what a, uh, for uh, a particular output you will have a particular input so uh, every time you give a particular input uh, uh sorry uh -huh. every time you give a particular input you will get a particular output but non deterministic methods are those methods uh, which vary most of the heuristic methods were non deterministic uh, the heuristic methods you can see genetic algorithm simulated annealing particle swarm optimization artificial beads tab search and there are so many uh, heuristic uh, methods which are non deterministic means for a particular input uh it will give you different outputs every time that means if you change uh, I mean, once you have given uh, first input again you repeated the input but the output will differ so we are uh, preferring here uh, to find the deterministic methods so deterministic methods uh, have been divided into three categories uh, on the basis of the derivatives used so when the derivative is not used we call them zero order methods when the first order derivatives are used in the method we call them first order methods and uh, when the second order derivatives are involved we call them second order methods so second order methods you already know there are so many newtons method uh, and uh, many more so see here first uh, difficulty is with some methods so the difficulty with zero order method is something like this when the objective function attains noise the finite differences estimate estimates can be inaccurate the complexity of the simplex method means there there is a, a very well known simplex method studied in uh, uh, to all graduate students engineering graduate students that is a simplex method so the complexity of the simplex method you, you will find that it, it is exponential so doesn't work for large scale problems because if the complexity is exponential it will take a lot of time to be evaluated so these are some difficulties or drawbacks with the zero order method the second order method second order methods always comes with the hessian matrix because second order derivatives has to be evaluated so our method which we are discussing prior that was a second order method because we have to evaluate the hessians there and on the basis of hessian we have to say which point is maximum or minimum so with the hessian this problem comes the large memory requirement for storing the hessian matrix high computation time for computing the hessian matrix now hessian matrix may not be positive definite always that also we have discussed last a uh, few minutes back and the difficulties with non deterministic methods are they require manual tuning for several specific optimization parameters so every time we cannot do this manual tuning and also takes too much time to solve this large scale problems 
so these are some difficulties with the zero order second order and non deterministic methods so but there is a method which uh, works very nicely when it comes to uh, solving large scale methods that is nothing but the first order method so the advantages of the first order methods while solving the large scale problems is the computational simplicity it is simple while computing because the first order is involved it takes a very low memory uh, because the second order derivatives were not required to be stored like hessian matrix uh, storing is not there here so the computations go fast